Clone biologists. In this session, we're going to take a look at natural clones in plants. Now, what we're going to talk about here, we're going to look at some examples of natural clones and how they're used for horticulture. So horticulture is basically growing crops. So all of these plants on here uh, can be grown normally to make clones. Um, so for example, strawberries, they uh, can tr grow out the stems um, in the soil. Um, to create new plants that will then grow roots and establish somewhere else. Elm trees again can extend their roots across in the soil. Potatoes, these can, these can grow tubers from these little dumplings, if you like, within their skins, and they can form new plants from those. Um, onions and bamboo are also plants that can create natural clones. Now, creating a clone is quite easy for these plants to do. They produce genetically identical copies of themselves through asexual reproduction using mitosis. It's basically cell division by mitosis. So this is a really good synoptic link in order for the exams, some examiners to um, ask you about here. So make sure you're aware of mitosis. So that's how we can use these natural clones within horticulture and how they can be exploited. But what they can do is, for example, they could choose a strawberry with which, which has a, um, quite a juicy, delicious taste. And they could exploit that to create clones of that particular strawberry so that we've got loads, lots of strawberries that have that really good, delicious taste. However, there are problems with using clones within horticulture. And that is that you have a very low genetic bio biodiversity. And as a result of having low biodiversity within your population, it might mean that they are more susceptible to change and diseases. And that has happened within the elm tree population. There was a disease that came along and has wiped out the majority of the elm tree population within England um, due to these clones being a genetically identical copy of each other. So this is how we can produce clones from cuttings. Um, anything in the red box here is taken directly from a mark scheme. So cuttings is a way to basically create clones of a parent plant. However, this is not natural. Um, humans do this. So what you would do is you would choose a healthy shoot and cut a section from that particular healthy parent plant. You would cut the stem at a slant. The whole idea here is to create a, a large surface area there for the xylem and the phloem. You'd also cut between the nodes. Um, then you would dip the end of this stem within rooting powders or plant hormones or auxin, and then place within soil or compost and add water. You would usually cover them with a plastic bag as well or remove some leaves to reduce the transpiration because what you want to happen is you want that plant to start inducing roots rather than focus on um, photosynthesis. So that's producing plants or clones from cuttings. The other one that we need to know about is grafting. So this is a fantastic picture where you can see there's obviously two separate species of plants. Here's two separate species of trees that have been forced to grow together by grafting. So this is where you join the shoot of one plant onto the growing stem or root of another plant. Now, the key thing here is to cut your piece of um, stem here at an angle to increase the surface area for adhesion. Now, the reason why you do this is because, for example, in this um, particular example here, we've got rootstock and this rootstock is really, really good. It has really good roots, uh, which are strong and, can, and really good for growth of the roots. Whereas I want this scallion um, shoot, if you like, because it produces tasty apples. So that is grafting. And there are advantages and disadvantages to cloning, which we mentioned before. The advantages of using cloning for, especially for horticulture, is that you can clone fruit that is seedless. Now, seeds are obviously used by fruit to create um, their offspring. Whereas if I have, for example, grapes that have no seed, I can create seedless fruit by cloning. Um, it's also good because these clones can have the desired genetic makeup for a certain traits. So we're talking about strawberries, for example, those clones might have a desired juicy or red colour. Um, now, it's really important that you use here whatever is in the exam question to make sure you get your marks. Now, the main disadvantage, as mentioned before, we have a low genetic biodiversity, so they're unlikely to withstand change within their environment. And that's pretty much everything that we need to know here on cloning. So guys, good luck with your exams and all the best.